Welcome back to Country Homestead. In this video, we're going to be showing you these uh, boards we put up last night on our sawmill shed. We're going to start walling this wall off. And we're going to make it to where there's an air gap in between the, uh, the wall. We're going to put some 1x12s, 1x10s, 8s, whatever I got. We're going to, we're going to put one on the, on the outside to begin with. Then we're going to scup over and we're going to put one on the inside. And then we're going to outside, inside. So there's going to be a, a two inch gap because these are a true two by four. There's going to be a two inch gap in between the outer boards and the inner boards so the airflow will come through. We don't want to block our airflow because this is where we're going to be making our drying racks. You see here, we're going to go from this middle beam, a post back, and we're going to wall all that off. We're going to close our gables off up top. Now up top, we're going to do regular uh, board and bat. But we did that last night, me and my brother-in-law did, but we just, it got so dark we couldn't video it. You see these angle irons. So we got a three and a half inch, three eighths lag going into the post and going into the two by four. This here was a uh, channel iron. And I, what I did, I just cut them to inch and a half and I cut it off. We got two three inch and three and a half inside and then one in here so it ain't going nowhere and we did that to the top and the bottom board so they're easy changeable if anything happens and they break all we got to do is unscrew it put a new board in now the top board if you can see there we lagged them On that top board, we pilot, dip, drilled a pilot hole all the way through the two by four, and then we lagged them with six inch, three eighths lags all the way into the bottom of that beam. So everything we did is easy changeable. And now we're finna start with the sheeting, putting the one bys on it. That's what we're looking at. So we got airflow good through there, but the rain and the sun should not go through it.
right, here's the wall we put up. You can see how I wanted the wall to inset inside of our post and beams. I didn't want to cover our post and beams up with a uh, two by fours and then put the siding over it. So that's why we got it set on the inside. And then like I said, there's a two inch gap in between the inner boards and the outer boards. So the airflow will be good. And you can see right through it, it'll stop all the wind and I mean all the uh, sun and the uh, rain. You see how the back looks. We'll then start working on the gable. We're just gonna do board and bat on it. We're not really worried about the airflow up there. Think she's gonna work out pretty good. As you can see here we got our walls up and we got us a pretty good air gap in between the inner boards and the outer boards there's a two by four in between the two you can see them and the way we made this is to uh, we don't want to cover our beams up with our walls so they're inset inside the post and beams so it still shows them big beams and then down here, you can see how we got this side covered. We also covered the gable. Now the gable we just did board and bat. We're not really too concerned about the airflow up there. The main thing is the airflow down here where we're going to be stacking all our wood to dry. And we have already started I'm working on the videos. See a little sneak peek of our drying racks. You kind of see how we made them. 
young beast four by four this side over here is over 12 foot and the other we can put 16 so but that's be showing all that later we're proud of her she sure is looking good